بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, Cherisher and Sustainer of the world the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his pure family, his joint companions and all those who follow him with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment Amen Dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh now Allah Almighty created the humanity and he sent to them prophets and messengers and each prophet and messenger will come attesting to those before him so he will not come contradicting them he will come to approve what they have brought in the beginning change only what is needed to be changed and most of the prophets and messengers will come and they will revive what was revealed before them they will attest to the prophets and messengers before them they will attest to the previous books from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deliver the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with whatever in that message any required change and required alternation and required addition they will bring that but in general they have to attest to the previous prophets and previous messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related this in the Holy Quran regarding Prophet Musa alayhi salam Prophet Isa alayhi salam and finally the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salam Allah Almighty also related this regarding the books the Bible, the, the Torah, the Bible, and finally the Holy Quran. In each one of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that attesting to what was revealed before it. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the last prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is the final one, the final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran for humanity. And it came attesting to the previous books and overwhelmingly over them as a criterion between the right are wrong showing the true straight path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the final guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humanity now the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related this information this beautiful information because each prophet complements the previous one till the last prophet and messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came that is prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said my example with the previous prophets is like someone who has built a palace and he finished the whole building except for one missing brick at the corner one small piece missing. so people used to come around and look at this beautiful house and say how beautiful is that they are pleased with it however if he had completed that only added this missing brick it will make it perfect one missing piece the message of Muhammad sallam, humbly said, and I am this missing brick. Subhanallah. That is out of humbleness. The message of Muhammad sallam, say that. He says, I am this missing. So this is with the sending of Prophet Muhammad sallam, you have the perfect guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the final piece from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related this information to us in the Holy Quran also. They speak, the, the Jew and the Christian, each one of them say, be a Jew or be a Christian, this is the way for guidance. Said no. Say, rather, the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the straight path that Ibrahim alayhi salam came, without any of the alternation that happened later on in history, and all the change and missing things and fabrication. Said no, this is the straight path. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us to something very beautiful, very important. Exactly after that. He said, say, O believers, than us. Say, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is revealed to us? And what was revealed before to the Prophet? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned names of them. Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, Al-Asbaq. And what was given to Musa alayhi salam and to Jesus. And what was given to the Prophets, all of them in general. We do not make a distinction between one of them and the other. We do not differentiate between them. To us, they are all prophets and messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respected. They are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to respect all of them, believe in all of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he ordered us, say, O oh believers, say, we don't make any distinction between them. This is repeated in the Holy Quran, in another place. In the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the final verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, truly, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam believed in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the believers also believed. Both of them, all of them. They believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the angels and the books 
and the prophets and messengers. And messengers. We do not differentiate between one messenger and another. To us, they are all chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and coming with very important message to humanity. When we understand this, we come to the next level. Next point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created humanity to, for, for one reason, that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now in real life, not everybody is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So you have good and bad, you have believers, disbelievers, you have all kinds of people. And you have also some other distinctions. You have nations and tribes and races, colors, ethnicity, etc., everything. So why are all these differences? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran the main reason. So he said, all oh, people, all oh, mankind, all oh, humanity, we have created you from a single male and a single female. And we made you into tribes and nation that you may know one another. What is the reason? To differentiate between one another? Make someone superior over another? Say this one is better than that and those are better than those. And like many people are joking against races sometimes, against places, against people, against uh, tri unbelievable. This is not allowed in Islam. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said that this is a form of ignorance, form of jahiliya. Jahiliya. They don't understand the main wisdom that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala made all of this. To know each other and to cooperate on goodness and justice. These are the main criteria that are mentioned. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala honored humanity in general. Allah Almighty chose a human being over all other creation. He honored human beings. Just by a human being, he is honored. Finally, the differentiation between them is on good, true belief, and righteous actions, and good morals. Those are the criteria to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Rest doesn't make any difference. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, there are no superiority for an Arab over an non-Arab. Nor for a non-Arab over an Arab. There are no superiority for a black over white, nor for white over black. None, except by taqwa, except by righteous deeds. Nothing. So there is no such thing. Anyone who thinks about any of these differences, this is a form of jahiliya, ignorance, not understanding, lack of understanding. And when we are explaining these points, we, because of the recent law that came, uh, here in the UAE, the law against uh, hatred and discrimination. Very important, alhamdulillah, it's a pioneering one all over the world. Most people claim and they say like this, this is uh, very important, we should not discriminate, we should not uh, make distinction between people based on race, color, etc. Everybody claims that. But you still have many people who are not abiding. You still have people who speak uh, hate speech, uh, people who are doing bad actions, etc. And we remember one principle in Islam, one beautiful principle in Islam. It says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restrains with the ruler what is not restrained or those who are not restrained with the Quran. Allah Almighty restrains with the law, with the ruler, with the authority, those who are not restrained by the Quran. What does that mean? You know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and guides people, do good deed, don't harm anybody, speak goodness to people, don't insult, don't shout, etc. Not everybody is going to abide, right? Some will abide, those who are true Muslims. Yes, they will understand. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said, anyone who is uh, to speak, let him say something good or remain silent. So you understand this. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا And speak to people, good speech, to people. He didn't say to Muslims, to your friends, to your relatives, to your neighbor, to people. You are a Muslim. You speak something, you say good things only. That is the criteria of a Muslim. The Messenger Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also described the believers. Uh, when the ignorant address them, they say peace. They say peaceful things, nice things. Don't say that. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the believer is not one who insults, who curses, who uh, backlashes, or who uh, speak vulgarity. No, this is not a Muslim. True believer have to abide by these guidance. Starting from the speech, even a speech, you, have, you are not allowed to be outrageous or to say bad things. But is everyone going to abide just by these guidelines? Not everyone. Some people will abide, some people will not. They need more training, they need more time to be good Muslims, right? So until then, what happens? Allah Almighty restrains those people from harming other people through law, through the Sultan, who should implement the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you are doing something bad, okay, the law. If you are not abiding by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, you will have to abide by the power of the law. That is one of the uh, responsibilities of authority. To implement the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among people. To protect all people from harming each other. There are people who do injustice. There are people who hate others. People who are irresponsible. So you have to control them through what? Through the law. This beautiful principle uh, in Islam is a, very, this is a, a clear example of that is this law. The law against hatred and discrimination. In Islam, there are no discrimination on any of these things. We have spoken about the prophets and about the uh, religion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned. And this law comes to deter anyone from insulting uh, Allah Almighty uh, or any of his uh, names or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone from insulting any prophet or messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from insulting the family of the prophets and messengers Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or the uh, sahaba عنه, or the companions of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or any of the followers of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed. So by law, no one is allowed to do any of that. And some people, some hateful people used to do uh, some of these things. Also, not to insult or degrade any religion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, and as you have seen in the example, there is difference between academic discussions and showing the truth and calling people upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right path. You have to do that on knowledge, with wisdom, with good advice, and not argue with them, except with something that is good in the best possible way, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified for us in the Holy Quran. But the form that you see from some people, hates and insults and degradation, this is not allowed at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually said in the Holy Quran, even the idols that the disbelievers worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from insulting the idols. He said, don't insult what they are worshipping. Apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't insult it. Don't insult what they are worshipping apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Least they will insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of ignorance. If you are going to insult him, he is going to insult you. You insult his, what, what is his God that he is worshipping, he insults your God. You insult his religion, he insults your religion. Is this the way for people to, uh, to live? Is this a way for humanity? No. Islam came to remove all of that. Make it peaceful for everyone. This is very important. What is called peaceful cooperation, peaceful coexistence in Islam is a very important principle in Islam. Also, the, this law is to deter people from harming or degrading or insulting uh, any, any place of worship. Any place of worship or place of burial for any uh, people. This is also stated in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned about protecting uh, the Muslims are allowed to protect themselves, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in one verse in the Holy Quran, and if it wasn't for people, you know, some people stopping others from harm and insult, if it wasn't for this people doing what is required to stop injustice and harm, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then it would have crumbled or broken down or destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four different types of places of worship. Temples, as Allah said, Sawami, place of worship. Bia, place of worship, this is for uh, Jew and this is for uh, Christian. And uh, Salawat, place, general places of worship, any worship. Wa masajid, and masajid. So four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four examples of different places of worship for different religions, one of them for Muslims. What does that mean? If it wasn't for people stopping injustice, those would have destroyed. Means even destroying this is something bad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants people to protect that. We have examples in the life of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he made treaties with many people, keeping their churches, their places of worship as it is for them. We have examples also in the life of Umar radiallahu anhu. One very beautiful example of that, when Umar radiallahu anhu went to Jerusalem. When he received Jerusalem, he made a treaty with the people of Jerusalem, the Christians, uh, in Jerusalem. And in it, it was stated that nobody should take their churches from them, not destroy it, not replace it, whether those churches are standing or demolished, whether they are used or not used. And think, very lengthy one. Interestingly, Umar Abdullah was invited by them to pray in the church. It was time for prayer. So inviting them, him to pray in the church. So he refused. Some of the Sahaba went and prayed. Umar Abdullah refused. He was the leader of Muslims and he refused to pray. So it was something very surprising. This is what you wrote, just, we just signed this treaty, so why you are not praying? So he said, I am afraid if I will pray here, later on Muslims will come and claim this as masjid. 
They will say, our leader prayed here, this is masjid, this belongs to us, and they will take it from you. I don't want to give them that. Can you imagine the insight of Umar This is the beautiful example. Our history in Islam is very beautiful in treating non-Muslims and uh, every other. The choice, this choice is provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not want to force anyone against his religion. Religion has to be by choice, not by force. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, if Allah Almighty wanted, then we'd have made all humanity as believers, all of them. Are you going to force them to be believers? No. Allah subhanahu wa does not wish to force anybody. So we understand from this, this important aspect that is mentioned uh, here, and this imp uh, important rule. Until today, till today, it has been more than 1,400 years, Muslims are ruling vast areas of Muslim uh, of lands all over the earth. You still find non-Muslims living in all of them. All of them, you still find Christian and Jew living till today. If Muslims want to do, remove all of that or t change it by force and destroy, they would have done that very long ago. You are talking about generations of generations of generations, 1,400 years, you still have. Many Jews are living in, in, uh, even in Arabia, in Yemen and uh, around it, uh, in places in Iraq, in Levant, in Sham, in uh, uh, Egypt, in Palestine, Jew, Christian, in Morocco, almost everywhere. Just check any Muslim land. You'll still find them Muslim living there. How come? Because Islam guarantees that to them. Still, it's up to you. Okay, fine. To live peaceful. However, we're talking about peaceful people, people who are not doing injustice to others. Anyone who does injustice to others, no, it's different. Muslims or non-Muslims, injustice is not tolerated in Islam. You have to stop injustice at any cost. First, by good advice, trying to reconcile, trying to solve it peacefully. It, if it doesn't work out, you have to stop it, even if you have to go to war. We have a very, example, very clear example nowadays. It's in places where people, thugs trying to destroy uh, life, took the uh, leadership, uh, and then they just started what is called ethnic cleansing of everybody, all over, killing. And alhamdulillah, some of the Muslim countries gathered together and they are making them stop at one time. The UAE is participating in that. Very important, yes, because in Islam you have to stop anyone who is doing injustice. Even, uh, it is a possibility that Muslim, Muslims are human beings, it is a possibility that there will be war among Muslims. Since our human being, and it's a possibility. What to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنْ طَائِفَتَانِ وَنْ Two groups of the believers, they fight each other. Then they try to reconcile between them. However, if some one of them, one of them, is arrogant and continues to do injustice and harm, then stop, fight the one that is doing injustice until it returns back, until it stops. And when it does, they reconcile between them. How beautiful is that? This is a very practical religion. So guiding people to peacefully and trying to reconcile between them at all costs, yes. But if it doesn't work out, you have to enforce law. You have to enforce by law, by the power of the law. And here in this example, this uh, law is regarding that. And you have also among Muslims themselves, you have some Muslims who are claiming as disbelievers, this group of Muslims and that group of Muslims and this group of Muslims, and continues to do that. These are disbelievers, those are polytheists, those are so and so. Unbelievable. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sent them as judges upon people. Who does that? And how do you know, subhanAllah, what you think is wrong, mommy, they are thinking exactly the same thing about what you are thinking. So not about judging each other. You agree on the principles. Later on, there are many differences among them. We are human beings, and those are tolerable. Those are tolerable. Academic discussions are academic discussions for specialists, not for anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke about the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the believers calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling upon the right path with knowledge and understanding. You have to have deep knowledge of these things. These are very delicate things. And the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned from claiming that any Muslim is a disbeliever, anyone. So much so, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, anyone who attributes disbelief to someone then one of them is truly a disbeliever. One of them will be a disbeliever, God forbid. See how dangerous it is. Either it is that person who is accused, or to return upon the person who accused him. SubhanAllah. How dangerous is that? Anyone among you ready to take that challenge? Anyone ready to gamble like this? 
This is too dangerous, unbelievable. The Messenger of Muhammad is warning in this very, very strict manner. Be extremely careful on this. This is not little, this is something very big. And now we understand why, during our times. People who are claiming that others are disbelievers or bookies, what they are doing? They are doing all crimes against them. So it's leading from just merely discussion, merely saying who's right and who's wrong, till it's coming now crimes. Crimes, hatreds, killing, etc. everything, unbelievable. That's what the Messenger of Muhammad warned. From step number one, even your speech, you have to be extremely careful about it. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us understand the religion correctly. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us uh, not hate or not have any illnesses in our heart, not have hatred or envy or bad feelings or ill feelings about anyone. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to his divine truth and make us good for ourselves, for our relatives, for our neighbor and society, and then for all humanity. Ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.